Hello all, welcome to another video on Jiri and T. In this video, I am going to give you a new approach which is called as TTFT approach for applying Jiri and T symbols. Let's begin. The first T in this TTFT approach stands for three part geometries. You take any part that is existing in this world that can be categorized into three category based upon the part geometry. So that stands for first T. Then the second T is for type of application. This three types of part geometry can be classified based on application into two. So once we know these two, the next stage is to what are the three types of four types of error that we can get out of these part geometries mm -hmm. and how to control them. Okay. The last T in this approach is called two possibilities. Out of these four errors, each four error can have one possibility or two possibility based upon the control that we are going to do. So once we know this, then any critical part geometry can be controlled with the geometrical characteristic symbols, 14 symbols. Now we will go in detail about what are the three types of part geometries, two applications and four types of error and what are these two possibilities that we have to understand this approach, TTFT approach better. Then we will take one case study and then apply this. The first three part geometry, the first T is for part geometry. So we have three types of part geometries. One is called axis symmetric feature. Here you have a shaft, the shaft is having an axis. If I hold it on axis and then rotate it for 360 degrees, I will get the same profile. Such parts are called as axis symmetric feature parts. The second type of part is called prismatic part. We have a rectangular block. There are planar surfaces. So these planar surface are called prismatic features. So this is an example of prismatic part or prismatic feature part. The third type of part geometry what we have is called 3D contour. So in this the blades are having three dimensional contour. So this is an example of 3D contour. You take any part that is available in the world today. It will be either of these three part geometries. It could be axisymmetric feature or prismatic feature or a 3D contour or it can be combination of any of this part geometries. In this if you see there is a hole. That hole is having an axis. Taking that axis if you rotate it by 360 degrees the shape will be same. So that hole is axisymmetric feature. The top surface is a planar surface. That is an example of prismatic feature. These blades are an example of 3D contours. The next T in this approach is called two applications. Based on application, whether we can classify these three part geometries into two categories, which is called as individual feature and related feature. If you take this axisymmetric feature as an example, I take a raw material, a extruded bar, hold it on one end of the bar with a check and then I start turning. Now I am holding on the diameter, I am turning the diameter. So the reference surface and the surface which I am mentioning both are same. Such surfaces are called individual features and the application is individual feature application. After turning this outside diameter, I am going to hold on this machined surface to make this surface flat. So this surface is taking a relationship of this outside diameter. So this becomes a related feature. If I want to make a hole, that hole is taking relationship with the outside diameter. So that hole is a related feature. So any surface which does not depend upon the neighboring surfaces is called individual feature. Any surface which depends upon the neighboring surfaces is called related features. So here we have another example with a prismatic part. To make this hole, I cannot directly drill this hole without taking x and y coordinates. 
to take x coordinate i want the help of this surface and to take y coordinate i want help of this surface so the whole axis is dependent on these two surfaces so this whole will become a related feature the f in this approach is for four types of error any part that we produce can undergo four types of error the first one is called size error variation in its size the second one is called form error variation in its shape is form error variation in its angle is called orientation error if there is a tilt there is an angular error that error is called orientation error the fourth type of error is called location error to get the axis of this boss we require two coordinates exactly maintaining x and y coordinate is not possible there can be some error that error is called a location error any part that we produce may have either of these four errors or combination of these errors so when we know our application and function of the part then we can easily anticipate any of these errors which can come due to 5ms it could be because of man operator not loading the raw material properly or not or it could be because of a wrong program selection or tool wear out or anything the second m for choice of machine if we don't choose the correct machine also we may get any of these four types of errors it could be because of material behavior it could be because of methods and it is also dependent upon how much money we are ready to spend to get a perfect part so once we know what is the error that we will get and how to control it then our life will become easier the last t in this approach is for two possibilities now we know that there are four types of error size error form error orientation error and location error these four errors can be on a surface level or it can be on the feature of size level so which one we wanted to control whether we wanted to control the error in surface level which is called feature control or is it possible required to control it in the feature of size level which we call feature of size control so once we know this then it becomes very very easy for us to apply those 14 symbols and get the best out of the design so these are the two possibilities surface possibility and feature of size possibility okay let us take a case study application example there are few parts which gets assembled together so here the base part is crankshaft on which the adapter is going to get assembled on the adapter we are going to assemble a pulley with a washer and a bolt now for this case study of ttft approach we'll take only these two parts crankshaft and the adapter now when i want to assemble this adapter onto the crankshaft there are two possibilities one is this diameter is going to enter into this counter bore on the crankshaft and face of this adapter is going to butt against the crankshaft face so these are the two surfaces which will come in contact with the mating part how it is going to get assembled based on that this diameter and this face are the two features which are important for us to assemble it with the crankshaft now there are two scenarios first scenario is i want this entire surface to butt again as the crankshaft surface so that i can maintain perpendicularity of this axis with reference to the crankshaft if that is the main priority for me then i will consider this surface as individual feature now this surface is an example of prismatic feature because it is a planar surface and based on the application it will act as a individual feature because this is the first surface which is going to come in contact with the mating part so this takes the priority this is the first surface which is not dependent on any other surfaces now 
out of t t f t the first t is it's a prismatic feature out of three part geometry i identified this as prismatic feature second t is application i have identified this as individual feature now in individual feature we have only one possibility that is to control the form so out of four errors size error form error orientation error and location error we can control only size for the, so, so, we can control only the form for the individual feature so now out of five categories and four errors we have squeezed it to form controls we wanted to control the form so under form we have straightness flatness circularity and cylindricity in this circularity and cylindricity can be applied only to axis symmetric features now that is the reason we identified this feature so this is a prismatic feature so straight away from those four symbols i cannot use a circularity and cylindricity now only two are left out in form controls that is straightness and flatness people who have watched my other videos will easily know that flatness is better than straightness for prismatic features so what we do we give flatness after giving flatness to this feature we take that as a datum now we are establishing a datum we are taking this surface as a reference after taking this as a datum now i want to control this diameter because when i assemble this is the diameter which is going to enter into the crankshaft so now i want to control this this diameter is taking a relationship with this surface now this diameter now apply ttft principle or approach t is this is a axis symmetric feature now second one is whether it is individual feature or related feature it is related feature because it is taking relationship with this datum surface a now what is the type of relationship the relationship is angle this surface and axis of this bose is 90 degrees so it is angular relationship if you have angular relationship out of four errors size error form error orientation error and location error the only thing that i can control is orientation in orientation we have angularity perpendicularity and parallelism here the angle is 90 degree so we have to go for perpendicularity again <clears throat> people who have watched my videos will know that when to use perpendicularity when to use angularity and when to use parallelism so here the angle is 90 degree so we have to use perpendicularity so we use perpendicularity now the feature control frame should have third compartment taking datum a as the reference now after i give perpendicularity now i have to look for possibilities the last t in ttft approach so here it is applied onto a feature of size axis so whenever we apply any geometrical tolerance to a feature of size then we have the flexibility of giving modifiers here i can give maximum material condition modifier to ensure that i get more tolerance when the part is produced at its smallest size it will get assembled without any functional deviation so i am giving flexibility so this is the last t in this case we, we did not use the last t because flatness on to a surface feature control so it is a feature so here i cannot use maximum material condition modifier or least material condition modifier now here since we are applying this perpendicularity on to a axis symmetric feature it is a feature of size axis so i can take the advantage of using modifier so out of feature or feature of size i am using it as feature of size and i am giving modifier so i control this after controlling this i am establishing the second datum which is datum b now after this adapter is assembled onto the crankshaft it should be mounted otherwise it will come out so for mounting we have mounting holes so there are five holes now i have to control the location of these five holes otherwise 
this mounting hole may not match with the threaded hole on the crankshaft. So I have to control that. Now, how far is this hole from the datum axis? Datum axis B. So that is controlled by location. Now this is a hole, axisymmetric feature. It is a related feature. This axis is taking relationship with this axis and this axis must be related to this face also. If this hole is at an angle, then also I will not be able to put the fastener and mount it. So I have to take relationship with this feature also. So this hole is a related feature. First is we identified it as axisymmetric feature, the first T. Second T is we identified it as related feature. Now what is the relationship? I want the orientation, this hole to be perpendicular to this face orientation and I want to locate this axis with reference to datum axis B. So two requirements. So location and orientation both can be achieved by giving position tolerance. So we are giving location. So out of four errors, we have seen form error, flatness. We saw orientation error, perpendicularity. Now the third type of error, which is location. So if I give position, it comes under location. I am locating this axis, how far it is from this datum axis. At the same time, automatically by giving location, I am controlling the perpendicularity of this axis with reference to datum A. So I am taking those two datum as datum references, datum A and datum B as datum reference here. So you can easily identify how in a systematic way I'm going. So based on this, first I gave this as an individual feature. I created a relationship between this and this. After that, I created a relationship between the five holes on this flange to this axis B and datum A, plane surface datum A. Now the, it is easy for us to assemble this onto the crankshaft, put the bolts and then fasten it. Now after doing that, we are going to assemble the pulley onto the adapter. Now this diameter becomes important for me. Now what is the requirement? Axis of this datum B and axis of this diameter should be in one line. It should be concentric. And axis of this diameter must be perpendicular to datum A, orientation. So again, concentricity is nothing but location. So in location, instead of concentricity, I can go for position because position will also control concentricity. It will control access to access. And we also know that position will control perpendicularity, orientation. So here this axis must be perpendicular to datum A. That is also taken care, right? So now we give position and some tolerance value with reference to datum A and B. So now you can see here it was position, location and perpendicularity. Here we am giving position to control concentricity and perpendicularity. People who have watched my video on concentricity know the disadvantage of concentricity and advantage of using position in place of concentricity. If you have not watched that video, I suggest or strongly recommend you to watch my video on concentricity and then come back and then watch this so that you will get a lot of clarity of why we are using position instead of concentricity. So out of four error, we saw how to control three errors, form error, orientation error and location error. So we didn't see only one thing which is size. So now here the overall length of this adapter is having a basic dimension 7.4 and 79. So 7.4 plus 79 is the total length of this adapter. So here for me important dimension is from this face, flange face to this. Because when I assemble this is the face which is going to butt. From there what is the length of this adapter is what is important. So 79. This 79 becomes the size dimension for me. Since the size dimension is a basic dimension, we know that basic dimension is a theoretical dimension. So for this, the tolerance should be given in the form of a geometrical tolerance. So on one side, we have a geometrical tolerance flatness. 
on other side we have a geometrical tolerance profile of a surface now this profile of a surface is the one which will go in which is going to control this size dimension this is the one which is going to control the form of this surface flatness of this surface this is the one which is going to control orientation of the surface this surface must be parallel to a and it must be perpendicular to b and this is the tolerance profile of the surface is the tolerance which will control the location how far is this surface from datum a so with this one single geometrical tolerance profile of a surface we control the size we control the form flatness we control the orientation in this case parallelity with a and perpendicularity with b and also we control the location how far is this surface from this datum surface a so like this all the errors can be controlled now going to this last part that is the last t of the approach here we are applying this geometrical tolerance onto a feature so i cannot use any modifier for profile of a surface so this is how we apply gdnt like this we there are few more geometrical tolerances this example i have taken directly from asme y14.5 2009 standard booklet so for this pulley and the washer you will get geometrical tolerance similar to this if you read that you can interpret the same way how i have introduced you to this approach called the ttft approach so this is one way of doing now another way of doing in this when we assemble diameter and the space is what is important so when i assemble diam many few people think that diameter is the one which will come in contact with this counter bore first so i have to take this diameter as individual feature so we, we we can do that also but we will see what will happen if i take a diameter as a individual feature if i take this diameter as a individual feature it is a axis symmetric feature so out of ttft first one we decided that it is a diameter which means it is axis symmetric feature second thing we decided that this is the first surface which is coming in contact with the mating part so i have to take that as individual feature now in individual feature we have form control i cannot apply flatness that is ruled out so what we have is only straightness circularity and cylindricity people who have watched my other videos on straightness circularity cylindricity can easily tell that cylindricity is the most appropriate geometrical tolerance for individual feature in this particular case so now what we will do we will replace this perpendicularity with cylindricity cylindricity of some value say 0.08 and i take that as datum a okay now so what is cylindricity cylindricity is a feature control feature control means i cannot take the advantage of maximum material condition and least material condition modifier so the tolerance will become stringent okay now i did that i took that as datum a now i have to control this face what is the relationship it is angular relationship in angular relationship what i have to give i have to give perpendicularity because the angle is 90 degrees so now what will happen if i give 90 degrees perpendicularity i'll give perpendicularity of some value with reference to datum a i can take this as the second datum b now here perpendicularity is applied to a surface which means again i cannot take the advantage of using maximum material condition modifier and least material condition modifier so here when you don't use flexibility of mmc lmc then the tolerances will become stringent it will be slightly difficult for the manufacturer to maintain the nothing wrong in giving like this all other things will remain same no change only here either you take diameter as primary datum a control it with the cylindricity 
then this face has a secondary datum control it with orientation control perpendicularity here since we are not able to give modifier in both these geometrical tolerances the tolerance will be very stringent whereas in this case this flatness is important for me so i am controlling it with 80 microns after that i am giving flexibility to this axis by adding a maximum material condition modifier many people might be wondering how come there is a zero here i have explained about this zero tolerance at mmc also in one of the video i strongly recommend to watch that and check for yourself whether we can use zero in gdnt or not hope this video was useful to you i will come with many more such videos in the near future thank you